explore a little bit this idea of uh, comping for yourself, which means, you know, it's playing some chords behind yourself to inter interact with your single note lines or to break them up or whatever. And this is an especially useful way to play in a trio or a duo situation. Uh, it can even be made to work where there's no bass, so that's very useful. It's really important, I think, that players kind of learn how to do this. The interesting thing is, historically, um, not everybody could do this. I think probably the first really well-known guitarist for doing this kind of thing, um, I mean, I probably could, could give some props to Barney Kessel, but, and he's a great trio player, but also Kenny Burrell. And, uh, and there are players, you know, for, uh, like great, canonical jazz players, jazz guitarists who weren't comfortable playing in a trio, like Wes Montgomery be an example, or Grant Green. Um, but now I think everybody's expected to be able to play in most situations. An interesting thing is if you listen to somebody like Pat Metheny playing the trio, he actually plays lots and lots of notes, he doesn't really disperse it with chords. But as guitarists, um, like Bruce Foreman, people like that, who are very, very good at playing chords or single note lines and juggling them. And of course, there's a whole contemporary movement of the New York jazz guitar mafia. <laughs> Um, for want of a better word, uh, including people like um, Lage Lund and um, uh, Jonathan Kreisberg and all the rest of them who are really, really good at this stuff. I mean, Kurt Rosenwink was great at it as well, kind of perhaps popularised a lot of this sound in contemporary jazz guitar. So um, uh, let's, let's dive in. So it's a relatively simple uh, basic concept. It's just the idea of shell voicings, which comes, I suppose, you, m most usually attributed to Bud Powell, although I think the history is slightly more complicated. It's basically the first thing I ever learned of jazz guitar. You play the root, the third and the seventh together. I'm playing I Remember You. The chords are going to be up. third and seventh there's no fifths in any of that and you can see how complete the harmony sounds now the interesting thing is if you just look at the notes on the d and the g string you have basically just the shell uh, sorry the guide tones the third and the seventh which give you pretty much the whole harmony of the tune and if you're playing with a bass, it's actually just enough to play that. So you can make a sort of arrangement, something like this. So, I mean, that's just a very, very simple approach, but it works really well. And, you know, you just have something you can put in there when the melody isn't happening so that uh, you don't get sort of, the ear doesn't get bored. Uh, you know, bass players can play fills in there as well and stuff to, and drummers can do something to kind of add more information. But um, it's just a really, a really easy way of arranging things and also sounds really good. Now, um, if we're, we're using that for soloing, Good way to do it is like take two bars on, two bars off, so something like this. I'll we'll start soloing.
noticed that there I went into uh, one bar each for the B section, which kind of added a little bit of developmental change to it. You could even do something irregular, I'll try and do this, so three bars. So it'd be solo, 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 comp. Do, but let this run quiet. One, two, three. <laughs> That's difficult, but you know, the idea is eventually it will just become very organic and, and you'll just be able to put chords in, especially at the end of lines. So if I play something like this. It's something that's not really nice and it kind of cuts cuts down the length of your lines as well which is a good thing especially if you're playing at faster tempos like this sort of thing <laughs> Like, um, the temptation to play quite so many notes is diminished, which is a good thing at that speed. Okay, the only thing I would say about this shell voicing idea is that the, the, the shells are quite high up. So it's the sort of thing that works well with the trio, but when you're playing on your own, you can miss a bit of bottom end. So a very, very simple approach to solving that problem is just if we take the bottom note of the shell and put it, you know, put it a string down if it's on the A string. So this F shape, F major shape here, just do that. C. Same for the E7, put it on the bass on the B, F7, bass on the C, and then uh, E flat 7, bass on the B flat. We'll use tritones as well, so that's like A minor, A flat 7, G, G flat 7, F right that. So let's give that a go, just the first bit. Uh, let's go back to our original tempo of 160 beats a minute, it's much better originally. horrifying this metronome just keeps going for the rest of your life yeah so i mean that's cool um you could even just cut simplify put things down a little bit so you're not playing any of the notes on the g string so it does sound something like this you could also add in a, a note on the a string if you want to so 
So yeah, so what I'm doing there, sorry, is um, I'm kind of... Now the nice thing about doing that is simpler shapes, it means I can... It means I can basically um, really simplify the fingerings down so that I can use my third and fourth finger in a majority of occasions to add notes in on top of what I want. So if I'm going, if I play a line, for instance, if I go... Uh, you see what I'm doing is I'm kind of uh, I'm able to play melody notes because the chord, the chord shape is so simple, it's just that. I can go grab a third or a second or a ninth or something. Sevens. Taking the shell and putting it upside down, so I'm taking that G, G note and putting it down an octave. Which obviously gives you a slightly more complicated chord shape, but if you just do the uh, shell, uh, the guide tones on their own, it'd be something like this. Which sounds a little bit more obscure, it's not quite as connected to the. Um, the original chord progression. So if you're playing on your own and without a bass, I tend to like having fifth or root down there. Just because it gives a bit more grounding to the overall music. Um, and that's it really. I don't, you know, I mean like there's little tricks like, for instance, I was sort of talking about holding the chord shape down and then settling over the top. But another thing you should equally be able to do is be able to play um, you know, a line. And play like melodic notes on top. Or, or sorry, um, or just kind of, you know, uh, have your line go into a chord is actually a little bit trickier. Issues with fingering. So, for instance, if I go, you know, uh, that's fine. And if I go, you have to use the second finger because I use the first. It's much harder to put a chord in there. Anyway, it's early days yet, but you can hopefully hear how much potential that that kind of approach of integrating chords and melody together has. Oh, one last thing. Um, a very subtle thing you can do is you can just sort of differentiate the volume between the uh, the melody notes and the chord. So if I'm playing like, um, let's go back to the metronome. So I'm just kind of keeping the, the volume of the chords underneath the single note lines, which kind of creates a slightly pianistic effect. Um, a lot of people who kind of better 
or more interested in hybrid picking than me, might do that. You better not be flat minor chord. Anyway, um, I hope you find it interesting and uh, post any comments below. Thanks for watching.